This is the Conservation Commission meeting of March 25, 2021. Called the meeting to order at 7.01 p.m. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL chapter 30A, section 20. Um, I'll have a roll call um, of the members. Tim Hilchey present. Bill Mayor PC present. Pete Law present. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, Do we have the minutes? I think you sent them to us, Bill. Did anyone have any, did everyone have a chance to read the minutes? I'd like to make a motion, uh, Bill Mayor PC to accept the minutes as written for the February 25th, 2021 meeting. Is there yeah, this is Pete Law, I'll second that. Um, in, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Bill Mayor, PC, aye. Pete Law, aye. Motion's carried 3 0. Um, all right. Um, <clears throat> at the moment, uh, I, I'm not sure why this is always put in this order, but I'm going to suggest that we review any mail. I don't have any that I'm aware of um, at the end of the meeting. And so we can move into the uh, new business uh, for the um, request for determination of applic the applicability at 107 Keats Road, Woolman Hill, Inc. Yeah. Present for Woolman Hill are David Allfield, Allfield and uh, Mickey Marcus. So would one of you two um, like to take us through this? I will uh, share my screen and... Um, show can everyone see this uh, if I if I, Tim uh, if I can just give a quick introduction so uh, Woolman Hill uh, uh, needs to build a new uh, public water supply we have gone through DEP. They do have a permit for the well. Um, the request for determination was filed um, because the well access location was going to be right, just right next to uh, a wetland swale, which is a bordering vegetated wetland. So uh, Tim and Bill came out for a site visit on Sunday. Um, it is not a difficulty to move the access road a little upgrading about 80 feet upgrading into uh, a, a different location, which is still within 100 feet uh, of the wetland swale. Um, but you know, a good distance away, a good dry access across the field. So um, basically, what is being requested is um, to put in. Uh, the it's, it's actually an access road, plus it, it's digging a trench for electricity um, and a water supply pipe. The, um, what, what I suggested in a recent memo to the commission on Monday is that prior to the, the contractors put, doing the work, notifying the commission, uh, one or all of you can come out there, you know, verify the location but um, it's, it's about 80 feet away from wetland. So in this picture, just for um, Pete Law's inf information, the silt fencing, this was the original access point where my um, cursor's moving and you're talking about shifting it 80 feet to the right. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, and, and and in the memo that I sent you on uh, on Monday, it had um, a photo showing that those areas. 
Right. Let me um, see if I can just. Did everyone get that photo, um, that memo? Uh, yes, I did a, actually did a, a drive by a few few days ago too to just kind of from the truck take a look at it. And Tim, yeah, Bill Mayer, PC, I did as well. Okay, good. Um, uh, Mickey, one question. This is Pete Law. When you said it's about eighty feet away from the wetland, is that after you move? And what yeah. is away from the wetland? The road or the trench or both? So, so in, in the photo that's on the screen now, which was a sill fence, the, the wetland is really on that left side there. Uh, mm -hmm. It's partly in that sill fence path they have there. And the idea is that they need uh, an access uh, for a truck to go across the field to drill the well. And they also need to dig a trench to uh, put in the, the electric you know, line and the, waters, and the water supply line. So the the work that is you know, the access and then the trench is approximately 80 feet to the right of that photo there. So it's basically in, in the middle of a field. And that's 80 feet away from the boundary? Of the wetlands, yeah. But it, it, it's within the buffer zone. Um, I, I think Woolman Hill uh, is trying to avoid any wetland impacts, get involved in any kind of wetland mitigation, long-term monitoring. They basically just want to be able to put in their well. The, the well site itself is out in the woods. Uh, there, there is a picture in the determination of the well site. We went and looked at it, uh, Tim and Bill, but it's um, it, it had to meet certain DEP criteria for a well site. It had to be a certain distance from buildings, a power line, um, so the engineer cited the actual well location here. And the trenching for the water line and the electric line is going to be pretty minimal as far as width. It will go down to depth, obviously, to get out of frost. But Yeah, our, our understanding has to be a minimum of four feet deep, but um, I don't know the details of that. Yeah. Maybe yeah, I think it would just be the, the width of a of an excavator uh, bucket yeah um, to set the set the pipe in and that would run more or less along the same route as the road itself so that would be closer to the wetlands or would it be on the northerns i think it would be the northern side of if you're over the the new uh, i'm sorry david the new road that's 80 feet across uh north or your, it's, it's, it's even to the right of that cursor. Um, okay. And I don't okay. know if you can pull that up. No, that's okay. I was just the old road versus the new. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. When, when we were out on the site visit, it was clear that the uh, preferred route uh, was too close to the wetlands. So um, the, the second location was found that was further away. I, I'm, I might interject here. I, I stayed around a little longer after the visit on Sunday and um, studied how many trees would have to be removed along this uh, route, which as Mickey described, 80 feet further to the right in this photo. <clears throat> and there's another route, another, another 10 or 15 feet to the right, which involves perhaps a few, uh, a few less um, large trees being removed. So um, you know, there's some flexibility there and, and perhaps preference. I mean, we'd like to avoid moving, removing the largest trees. Mickey, you, you mentioned that, um, you were thinking about having, um, another visit before the actual tree cutting starts to have everybody be in agreement on this. Yeah. I, I, I thought that the, the, the uh, giving the commission, you know, say, I don't know, 48 hour notice, three day notice uh, prior to the contractor doing the work, just so you can uh, see exactly where uh, the contractor picked out the route. We would, I think I, I, another, another confirmation, I guess, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. We would, I guess the idea would be we would set the silt fence um, on the uh, downslope side towards the wetlands, that side of the road and um, be doing our work on the uphill side of that. 
and that you know that would be the indication of where it's going to be. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, will you mark the trees you're planning to remove just so it's easy to tell? I mean, that I the idea that the uh, the larger trees would be preserved that's great. Um, if that makes sense for for you and Mickey, um, but uh, just so it's easy to quickly go out there and say, okay, this is where it's going. Sure, sure, we can do that. Bill, do you? Yeah, have it's just the flagging route that we looked at on Sunday would just shift over about fifteen feet northward. Okay. And that well, was yeah, so, uh, hey, Tim, Bill Mayer, PC. It sounds like we're actually now uh, talking about some some conditions. Um, you know, I I think that uh, I, I, I was there on, on Sunday. I would just like to give Peter a chance to make sure he's comfortable with the conditions that we're, that we're talking about because it, we started with 80 feet. Now it sounds like it's 95 feet or 90 to 95 feet. Uh, and the commission would have a chance to approve, kind of have, sounds like final approval prior to the construction starting. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I think what, what um, I, for, from my perspective, it looks like uh, Woolman Hill is able to, you know, has flexibility in where their access goes. It looks like uh, they can't do the work and be a hundred feet or more from the from that wetland. So I yeah you know, I think it it looked like a negative determination was appropriate because they weren't going to alter wetlands, but still you wanted to you know make sure that they're doing the work properly and they had the erosion control set up and there wasn't going to be any wetland issue. So that, that's why I suggested that notifying the commission ahead of time. Um, with a sill fence, you know, uh, I think if, if Woolman Hill's willing to mark out the tree roots, then, then you can go take a look at it and make sure that you understand their route before they start digging. Okay, and the erosion control will only be on the south side of your access road? Is that what? Yeah, the, there's, it, it's, a, it's, a sloped, it's a sloped field, so it's, it'd be the downgrade inside. Certainly put it on both sides if that would be recommended. Uh, as Pete, I'll leave that up to, uh, to Tim and Bill that took a closer look at it. But, um, you know, as long as we're oh, we protecting down gradient, it depends on how you put the road grade in and how it's depth and and so forth and what it looks on the northern side. But uh... so I've um, just put up the, the picture that uh, Mickey Marcus sent showing the original location. And then um, there was a flagged area over here past the end of the silt fence and the well locations up in here and they were looking about going in here. So <clears throat> David, if I understand you correctly, you're saying just Instead of here, it would be slightly more like here. That's that's just right. Yep. Okay. Basically, yeah. <laughs> I was looking at that and thinking, well, what we looked at on Sunday was where the letter A is, and, and now I'm talking about where the letter S is. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I see there's a couple of larger trees here. And um, now the other thing I, Tim Ilchig, and the other thing I'd like to clarify, um, I've heard from Mickey Marcus saying that there's a willingness to not put in a permanent road, but I'm just wondering if I'm hearing from David that he has a preference to put in a road. Um, I, I would prefer not to have a road, but uh, we, we do have to get a heavy piece of equipment across that meadow. And it's a little soft, even at that, where the word access is, as, as you saw. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think the, the excavator may weigh in on that and um, want to put some gravel in. Um, 
I, I would like to avoid that if we can, or maybe even wait till dry weather. Because this is dry in the, in the summer. I've mowed this myself and the, the, the whole area is dry. Mickey, do you have any thoughts about waiting until it's dry? I mean. Uh, you know, I, I, I think it, it really just has to do with when Woolman Hill needs to put in their well. So um, I, I think I think it's just a discussion between Woolman Hill and the excavator and then getting back to the commission and what they'd like to do when they'd like to do it. So, hey, Tim, it's Bill Mayer, PC. I just would like to express that um, uh, if we're now considering waiting to hear back from the uh, excavator, I think that, you know, the, uh, the gravel uh, definitely in full impact because now we're looking at, depending on how and where it's presented, that could alter parts of the wetland or, or something that's more, that's closer to the wetland. Um, so, I mean, that certainly impacts a decision that the commission could make, correct? Yeah, I guess that's true. And um, until we know when you wanna put the well in, um, and since it seems that that could determine whether you put gravel in or not, um, I don't know uh, what other people are thinking. I mean, what's been described without, without gravel for an access road to me, what's been described seems reasonable. And it seems reasonable that we would go out before the work was starting. Um, but, you know, we sort of need to know gravel or no gravel and um, and when the work's going to start, um, if, if you can take a heavy piece of equipment across this with um, construction mats or whatever they call it, um, and the, the operator is satisfied that they can, they can get up in there, um, then that would leave the, that would leave the area once the work is done undisturbed. So we would yeah. have much, much less worry that there might be some sort of impact. So I think that's maybe what uh, Bill's been expressing um, somewhat. Yeah, but, Tim, thank you. That, that is exactly, Bill Mayer, if you say it's exactly what I'm, I'm expressing, the impact on the land. Mm -hmm. Got it, okay. Well, um, we have looked at uh, construction mats as a, as a way to go um, to avoid the gravel. And um, uh, I'd be I'd be happy to commit to that. Um, I mean, we would like to get this going, get the project going. Um, uh, so I'd be I'd be willing to commit to that if that is, um, in other words, say no to make this make the statement no gravel. Okay. And we'll figure out how to cross that wet if if it continues to be wet by the time we get the well driller in. Do you have uh, other questions, Pete? Uh, no, uh, uh, this is Pete Law. No, I don't. Um, I think the option of the construction mats um, versus trying to put in. I'm not sure just what a permanent or semi-permanent road would mean so if we do the construction mats we would avoid all that conversation too um right. and and if we have um if we have the erosion mats on, or they have the erosion control on the the lower side uh no um i think i'm good with the uh, information but thank you um, so maybe we can put something together bill with that one one or two conditions of either timing or, or uh, definitely a construction mat um, requirement We still, if we do construction mats, would we still be worried about timing, or can we go forward with that condition? 
Bill, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, so hey, Tim, hey, Peter, uh, Bill Mayer, PC. So I, I guess uh, um, that definitely makes me more confident uh, that the use of construction mats will be used. Um, I, um, I think that given that information, I, I would still like the commission to be called up uh, um, you know, 48 hours prior to uh, things happening so that we can, uh, you know, make sure that that's the route that the, uh, the person um, constructing the well is, is, uh, is comfortable with at that time. Um, so, yeah, I don't have, uh, I don't have further thoughts. Uh, it seems the three of us have Ask some good questions. Okay, this is Pete Loggett. I do not. I just have a one small screen I'm working on tonight. I don't have the RDA in front of me. Um, I looked at it earlier, but I forget which. You want me to call which item room? that we uh, need to um, to look at? But we need to vote positive, negative on one of whatever the application was, with probably the two conditions of uh, notifications and construction mats. But I don't. I, I'm Let a little limited up. on my computer screens tonight. <laughs> Let me call it up uh, again, the original, and uh, go to the language. So this is what Nikki filed. So yeah, I just saw one. There was a request for. It was in B determinations. Um, and he's checked that whether the work depicted on plans referenced below is subject to the Wetlands Protection Act. Um, and Mickey, um, you were saying you were looking for a negative determination? Yeah, so when the commission issues, so, so I, I filed the request for determination of applicability, the commission will issue a determination of applicability. And, uh, you know, th there are a couple of boxes you check. You know, one is, uh, yes, this project will alter wetlands or no, it won't alter wetlands. Uh, they're, they're like two or three choices. And so uh, the box I, I, I would anticipate you would check is a negative determination. And then you would just add uh, whatever the appropriate conditions are that you want. Right. And be a negative determination. Uh, uh, you know, um, set of action. Uh, uh, so B, B dot C, I think if I um, with conditions. So um, the reason why I asked about um, what you were looking for is I'm not, you know, we're st I'm still learning how these forms, um, what information these forms contain. Um, so. Yeah, so, so, so the, the request for determination, you, you can use it in a couple of ways. Um, right. You can use it uh, for simple projects to verify wetland boundaries. You can use it um, to say yes. That you know somebody may say you know not sure if this is a wetland or not. Uh, can you you know d d determine whether it is? And you would then uh, you know uh, say yes, it's a wetland. It's subject to Wetlands Protection Act. No, it's not subject. Um, I was uh, interested in the the work and trying to avoid wetlands coming up with uh, a location for Woman Hill to have the well location outside of actual wetland boundaries. So, uh, you know, my expectation is, is that what you would issue is uh, the determination of applicability form with a negative determination. And then you, you, normally you don't have conditions with a determination, but you can have things like you know, erosion control site visit, you have some very um, kind of like non-invasive kind of conditions that are attached to that with either on the condition or an attached letter. Uh, but normally when somebody files a notice of intent, that, that's when you would have the orders of conditions, you know, with more lengthy conditions attached for a specific project. Right. But this form, you're whatever we decide you're saying that we're going to we're going to file a different form you are it's a dp form and I, I i don't have it in front of me but it's a um it's a determinant you know if, if it would be easier on all of you i can 
draft the form and just send it to you and you can finish filling it out. But it's a, it's a different form. Um, so I, I filed the request for determination and you, the commission would issue the determination. Right. Um, yeah, because I mean, I, I, I would like to get the, uh, the paperwork done correctly the first time. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I, I can fill it out and, um, and, and you know, you, you know, the commission has to vote on it and, and make sure it's correct in, in what you, you want it to you know, be. Right. So if I'm understanding, uh, oh, sorry, Mickey, continue. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, that's fine. So all right, so if I'm hearing what Pete and uh, Bill are saying, we are basically looking at two items that we want on whatever paperwork we finish. And we want to um, require that the, the, the work is done with the use of construction mats and that the, um, the commission be given 48 hours notice before tree clearing begins for, um, for the project to go through. Uh, so we know where this, where the access point is and and then uh, <clears throat> so those are the two things we talked about yes hi tim it's bill mayor pc i would make a motion that we would um determine a negative uh uh and i'm, I'm not going to add the number on it because we're not looking at the form um uh, it would be a negative determination with the, the two uh, order of conditions. Uh, number one, that uh, construction mats are used. Um, and number two, that the commission uh, can have a final site visit uh, um, no earlier, I guess it'd be uh, than 48 hours prior to the start of the project. And I'm looking at, at Peter's body language to see if he agrees with that language. Yes. This is Pete, just looking at my notes. Uh, this is Pete Law, I uh, second the motion. Okay, um, motion's been forwarded and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Hey, hey Tim, if I could just interject for a second. Um, you want me to add language for them to mark the trees that I think Woman Hill said they would do and then the other thing I was thinking about is um, probably reseed um, any ruts in the field. Yes, I think that uh, would you be willing to accept those additions, Bill? Uh, yes, I would be willing to accept those additions. Um, uh, so should we start with a, a, a new motion to... Uh, yeah, let's make it clean. <laughs> Make it clean. We could uh, speed right. lodges before that. I, I would have thought that was in the original plan, though. That those do we have to make a special condition for that? That seems to be like a a very straightforward part of of your of the plan, Mickey. Was were those not in there? Or? I, I don't think that language was, was there. And okay. if I left that out, I apologize. Okay, no problem. Then then let's formally add them to it. And thank you for bringing that up. Okay. And what happens when you make assumptions? Yeah, I think the original one was consideration of that they might have a gravel road, in which case you wouldn't be reseeding. So, um, okay. okay, so Bill, I'll let you go, go at it again. So I'm going to scrap my uh, initial motion um, and start over. Um, uh, make a motion for a negative determination of uh, applicability um, with conditions that the applicant use a construction mat, um, that the applicant um, reseed uh, any area of the lawn that's disturbed uh, uh, during construction, um, and uh, that the applicant notify the condition, the commission, um, 48 hours, uh, or for a site visit, 48 hours before the uh, work starts and that they mark which trees will be impacted uh, by the construction. Have a second? 
Yes, Pete Law, I second the motion. Thank you. Motion. I don't want to have to say it again. Yes, <laughs> motion has been made and seconded. And is there any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll move to a vote. Um, Tim Hilchey, aye. Bill Mayor, uh, PC, aye. Uh, Pete Law, aye. Okay. Um, I think we have, uh, and Mickey, you're going to pull together this form and you'll put some suggested language that we will uh, then review and assuming everything is in agreement with what we've just said, um, then I will consult with, uh, with, probably I'll ask Mark if we need to have another vote on this once we see the form and- um, yeah, yeah no, normally uh, the form, um, it just requires a signature. Um, right. That's what I'm anticipating. Issue it, but but uh, I'll I'll try to capture um, you know what the commission just. Okay. Um, David, do you have anything else? I just want to be clear. So we before we before we start any construction other than setting up construction fence, a silt fence. We will 48 hours before, at least 48 hours before that, we will notify you folks. And we I guess will, we, we'll set you, up a site yeah. visit. Yes, we'll we'll do a site visit just to verify that you have your erosion controls in place and that the, there's hay bales. I think you said silt fence and hay bales, and um, and that the trees are marked, and before the heavy equipment and the chainsaws go in. Okay. Okay, and uh, with the with the paperwork flow here, I'm not quite understanding if if we can can we move forward now or should we wait until the paperwork is finished? Um, Mickey, I think we we need to get the paperwork filed and signed. Yeah, okay. David, you should you should not do any work until you you. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, this Pete Law, Mickey, you're cutting out on my uh, audio, anyways, but, um, but David, we do want to oh, wait until everything is signed. Okay, very yeah. good. Uh -huh. So as soon as Mickey can get the form to us and we can review it and make sure it says what it's supposed to say, then we can get it signed. Um, so yeah. I'll leave it. And I guess we'll get a copy of it. Right. We'll get a copy of it. Great. Okay. Okay. You'll, so be notified, you'll be notified by Sue Brulot, who's the building assistant, uh, right. that, that all, for, all the forms have been signed. Yeah. And, and Tim, what, what I'll send you is, is the Word document. So you can just edit it if you don't like the language that I put in there. So you can right. capture what the commission wanted, but it'll be, you know, it, it'll be a, a Word document that you can edit. Okay. Right. And I'll share it with the other commissioners too. Um, but I'll probably you know, have Sue Brulot send it to us so we can avoid any open meeting issues. Not that there would be any, but um, we want to make sure we don't create any troubles for anyone. All right. Well, is there anything else for these gentlemen? Sounds clear to me. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, David. Thank you, Mickey. Thank yep. you all for the time. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for going through the process. Okay. You bet. I know. Thank you. Okay, so um, since we have Kevin um, Scarborough on the line, um, I would like to um, suggest that we move to the old business and come back to discussion of uh, consultants just so Kevin can get on with his evening. He's been working a lot of hours. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, um, Kevin, do you want to, do you have any um, images or anything that, uh, or were they all in the email you sent me? Should everything I, I had was in the email. Um, I'll, if you like, I'll give a brief synopsis of where I was or where we're sure. at. All right. So, um, the contractor that came in, um, core group, which subbed out Emmy Smith, were the contractors at Kelleher for the culvert replacement. Um, 
I'm concerned about what there was for silt that went down the stream. Um, looking at some of the emails that have gone back and forth basically today, because um, I'm sorry, but all of this, I didn't recognize that your your meeting was tonight. Um, and all of this was, was basically was put together yesterday. Um, but I wanted to make sure that we were probably heading in the right direction. Um, so to kind of like recap everything, because there, a lot of things went back and forth. Um, this is basically the email that came from our, our uh, senior project manager. And it's basically, this is uh, uh, in our opinion, this is not, this does not need to turn into a major problem. This can be handled in a way that appeases all of the intent of the project. Throughout most of the construction, the sediment bags were have been used. And when they weren't, Ty and Bond noted to the contractor to make sure they used them. This happened on multiple occasions. We believe that the majority of the sediment that moved from the site <clears throat> was when the contractor did not effectively bypass pump during rain events and when their pumps failed, leading to water flowing through the sites. This again was repeated, repeatedly noted to the contractor. That said, the problem we are talking about is a relatively small amount of sediment immediately downstream of the project that we, where to go? Oh, did, are you, were you reading from me? No, I was reading from mine and all of a sudden it just disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. Um, no, I thought I was reading from me. Okay, yeah, if you could stay there for half a second. Uh, yep. I think you were, that said. Okay, that said, the problem we were talking about is relatively small, this small amount of sedimentation uh, immediately downstream of the project um, that we suggest be removed. The plan is to notify the contractor about this Monday morning at the site visit to be scheduled, which we already have eight o'clock Monday morning, to determine what the physical plan of the action is to be, make appropriate notifications to the, to the CONCOM and the ACOE uh, reviewer. And then basically it's just let, just let me know if there's anything else you need. Um, again, scheduling Monday, 8 a.m. Uh, for on-site. So to, to, that gives it kind of a nutshell of where we're at right now. But what my concern was, was I saw it downstream. I really wasn't super impressed with it. I, I want to make sure things are done right. And I want to make sure that the town is not on the hook for other things that other people have done in the past. Um, unfortunately, that's been a repeat of which happened within the town throughout the years. And I'm, I'm trying to stop that cycle. Um, you know, I don't want to have a problem here where all of a sudden we're having even more of a flooding problem because it, it just can't go downstream because of the sediment that got in the way. Very similar to the issue that we have now between five and 10 and Mill Village Road across in the candy kitchen. You know, and now that right there is gonna turn into $100,000 worth of permitting just to try and get the permits to try and get in there to reestablish the stream where it needs to go, which unfortunately we were not even close to being there. Um, so that was my concern of, of why we wanted to, do, why I was concerned about it. I wanted to show that there was bypass pumping that wasn't gone through the sediment bags um, I'm, I'm just trying to dot my I's, cross my T's, make sure we're doing the proper thing for, uh, for the town. So these images, the one I have here, um, shows a hose that's just shooting water straight into the stream bed. And now what they had there was, was they had <laughs> at any point in time, they had a four inch a three inch, usually the three inches were the small, small ones where you can see where the clear hose is, which normally comes out of like by where the hole would be where they should be working. Then they've got a couple of six inch ones um, that they finally got went to two six inch ones and figured out, oh, that's the way to go. Um, I believe the one you've got right there where your cursor is, I believe that's the four inch pump that they're utilizing. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really see that much of a problem when they were bypassing from ahead of the coffer dam to, to bypass the system. That material that was there was going through was literally looked like drinking water. What I was concerned about, what was actually coming out of basically the, the four inch or the three inch that was coming out of the, the work area per se, which was the sump, you know, and that always, and that all the, all the time should have been going through the silt bag. And it wasn't all the time. I mean, one of them, you can, you'll see that um they're pumping and there's two 
concrete blocks on top of the sobat, uh, which I believe is the first one. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, you know, Tim, I, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, Kevin. This Pete Lock. I, I'm not seeing any of the photos, Tim. I'm oh, you're not? Sure. No. Start. That's all. I'm, I, I didn't download these. So, oh, that's okay. But I was trying to show this in my, uh, in my email. So I guess that's not coming through. Um, Sorry to interrupt you, Kevin. Just, uh, oh, no, just no, no, not at all. No, I'll have no, a few uh, questions. I'm just trying to see if I've done. got anything that's because obviously I'm home. <clears throat> I'm just trying now to see if me, I got something handy that I can go ahead and pull up. I'll download two up of the photos. two of the main photos and then um, try to share them. I mean, I did stop in a few times and viewed it. And I don't know if it was January, early February, but there was a lot of flow coming through there. Yeah, there was, uh, you know, and there was a couple time. times that, you know, they, I will give out of this entire project, I will give them probably three events that were out of their control. Um, just because the water that came down there, there, there was no way they were going to be able to control it. You know, they, they'd have to have, you know, multiple 16 inch pumps and, and they'd have to build a wall of China to be able to hold it back. <laughs> yeah, it was right um, up almost to the road at one point when I went by. Exactly, you know, and there's yeah. nothing you're going to be able to do to, to do that, you know, and that could, and, and I'm quite sure the contractors can say, well, that's the one that put all the silt down there, so I can't be <laughs> held responsible for it. Yeah, um, the one. I, I can guarantee that because it's, it's I, I'm quite sure this guy has lost his shirt on this project because of what it is. You know, Got on a long time, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, the project was supposed to be done November 15th. So, you know, the, the issue of, of his, when he hit the, when he hit the power, that was completely out of his control. I mean, it wouldn't have made a difference who we had digging. They would have hit the power because it was 18 feet away from the markings. Wow. You're only supposed to be 17 inches one side or the other of the line right. by law. So, um, yeah, so needless to say, in the beginning, Eversource said, well, the town's going to have to pay for this. And I said, uh, no. And he's like, well, it wasn't us. It was Dick Safe. And I was like, do you think they got the information from a cracker job box? You know, uh, you told them. So it's your responsibility, ultimately. So going back and then finally, I was just like, you know what? This is well above your, beyond your pay grade. So we, I just moved up the, the food chain and things seemed to work out very well. Uh, once again, we were very fortunate because um the, the engineer that we have right now eversource is their largest environmental consultant so or i should say customer so with that being said he knew who to talk to there was no strings pulled but it you know we knew we yeah. went directly to the top and they passed all the others and everything worked out fine you know they put a new line holding errors and they didn't charge it down. um so but our, again, the long the shores, what I'm concerned about is I just want to make sure that, that this is taken care of because I don't want to see the town holding the bag six months, a year, two years, five years down the road where you should have did this, you didn't do it, now you have to, and now it's on the town dime instead of the contractor's dime. Bill, have you heard enough about this to understand the situation? I have, and I walk by daily. Uh, and I have to say that the, it's looking nice now. I just have to ask Kevin, uh, how's the flow now? Like, uh, are we still flowing into sediment or how's, how are things looking? Um, for the most part, everything is, is calming down because what there was, was there was a combination of, of natural material that, because part of the permit was natural material had to come out mi being mixed with, I believe it was three quarter crushed gravel to be able to give it a, a good base for the, the bed to flow through. Um, with that being said, you know, I, I believe there's been enough water that's flowed through there that for the most part is, is pretty much calmed down. You know, if you're getting any sediment, it could be from upstream too, because, um, a, the water's moving through there. You know, the big thing that I wanted to make sure that everyone was well aware of, even before the project started was, was this being replaced is not to stop the flooding. If you want to completely stop the flooding, there's a lot of other things that have to happen. You need to increase that size. You need to increase the size of the one that goes underneath North Main Street. The one that's that goes underneath the railroad track over there by um, Conway Street was just done like four years ago, you know, over by the school, the elementary school. Um, but then, then you have to look at what there is for trash all the way to the Millers. The Millers in turn turns into the... Um, 
the Connecticut, which then in turn turns into a uh, navigational waterway. So it's really kind of weird how you, you have to kind of follow the bouncing ball with this. Um, but Alex. like I said, ho hopefully this was more of, I wanted you guys aware of what was going on. Um, I, I needed to, I, I wanted to put up the flares again, because I'm just trying to make sure I do, I'm doing the right thing. Um, get it done Monday. We'll go through. Well, I'm sure there's going to be arguments going back and forth, but we'll get through it. And then we'll make a decision what the plan is going to be. And when we do, then we'll, we'll obviously um, inform everybody in, involved before anything gets moved forward. Yeah. So I'm assuming, yeah. you know, they may end up saying, you know, throw up a couple of copper dams and, and doing your, uh, your bypass pumping and go in there and take it out by hand, or, you know, you're allowed to go in there with a mini or, or whatever it may be. You know, again, that's, that's not my call. I'm not the engineer and I'm not going to try and put words in their mouth. So Please Kevin, this is Pete Law. I just have a couple of questions for you, and yes, you know, this is more your involvement. But I mean, so it, you know, you said there's a small amount of sediment uh, just downstream. I'm not sure who made that determination of small or medium or large, but the the sediment just downstream from that, with the with the flow coming through there and the in the in the the flows that we've had, I mean, that's all going to be scoured. That's going to be just the heavy stuff that was left behind in that one area. Are they held responsible at all going downstream to areas that will pool up, be a little bit slower, where you get a little bit more settling of the smaller sediments, the fines and so forth? I mean, this could really go down sure, down the road quite a ways. And if we want to discuss with them now, you know, you may want to cover every possibility, mm -hmm. um, you know, so we don't have to bring it up later. Just, sure. just wondering, because that was a real scour for a couple of weeks. I mean, it was right. flying through there. Exactly. Well, you know, if there's I, any I, sediment I, there now, it's heavy. It's what just couldn't make it through. But there's sure, a lot yeah. more downstream. Right. I, I agree completely. And unfortunately, I can't give you an answer because I truly don't know. Yeah. Um, hopefully, that's what Monday is going to be. Um, the determ the, it was it was not a, a superficial determination by any type of surveying or or right. uh, trying to quantify the amount of material that was there it was a kind of a quick the engineer took a quick walk down through the stream and went down to basically number 99 uh north main street which is you know where Galinsky's working on that house uh that white house on the corner of pleasant street yep the next house going north is number 99 so basically what he's what he's claiming is is because it he says that it, it filters out big time before there so that was his partial determination, but I understand where you're coming from, where, like you said, the particulates could have, could be yeah. a thousand those, yards down the, down the, on the brook. And those yeah. small finds, the smaller ones, that's, that's more problematic to the aquatic organisms and the heavier stuff that's going to settle out. So it's, sure. it's, it's a little bit, you know, may not be visual, but that there may be um, more of an issue in, in other areas, but I don't know how you determine that without having all the background and and, sure. like and, said, and, but... and I'll be honest with you, that's that's well <laughs> that's well beyond me. You know, that, that's why yeah. we bring in the engineers. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, understood. I appreciate it. Um, good luck with it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thanks. So uh, just to be clear, um, Tim Hilcher here, Kevin. Um, yes, sir. Who who is who are me, who's meeting? It's the contractor, the tie and bond engineer that oversaw saw the project, or um, I believe it, it actually will be the project. It'll be the project manager. I, I'm quite sure that it's not going to be just the the quote unquote the kid that was there. You know, I mean, granted they were they were a PE, mm -hmm. um, but they were young. You know, um, the person that will be at the meeting is is more. Zach Chernia. Higher up. Exactly. It'll be Zach. So it's, it's much higher up the food chain. Uh, I'll be there. I'm quite sure Casey's going to be there. Um, and then we'll just kind of, we'll, we'll just see how this whole thing plays out. You know, obviously we'll document what, what happened, what the plans are and uh, just kind of move forward with it. But mm -hmm. again, I just want to make sure that we, I, I just wanted to get ahead of this, you know, because, you know, unfortunately you, you, you see how a lot of the, the wheels turn in town, they turn very, very slow. And I don't want to get caught behind the cart with a slow moving and lose an opportunity to fix something that I don't think the town should have to pay for. Okay. Bill, do you have any other questions for 
Uh, no, actually, Tim, thank you. And Peter, thank you for, and Kevin, thank you. And it, it sounds like you're doing uh, the best that you can do with this uh, situation. So I, I really think that the commission should let Kevin go forth and do what I do, <laughs> do what you do. Uh, yeah. um, you know, and, and obviously, you know, I'm going to keep everybody well, in, well informed. Um, you know, obviously, as things go along, I can go ahead and I can email the three of you. Um, but as, as long as it goes through as a blind CC and we don't have any discussion about it, it is more of an informational purpose that is coming to you. So that way you can receive the information. But as long as you don't talk about it, then there's not an open meeting law that is being broken. So this way you, you have the opportunity at your leisure to look at something and absorb it. So that way, when we come back, that way you can have a list of questions. And at that point in time, if you know you have a list, I'll have the engineer along with us um zach so that way he can answer any questions and actually he said that you know he's all, i'll be on the phone if you really need me so uh, okay. but i told him i said you know i said i think i can handle tonight but the next time we meet i believe that you know i think he should be involved okay and, and, and just to clarify kevin those would be questions to get back to you before your monday meeting uh, uh no the uh, no 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 this would be this was going to be the information that you're getting after our Monday meeting, yeah, thank and you. then you can then that way you you can digest what was said, what was done, what the thought processes were, if any determination on how we were going to move forward with it, or a plan per se, uh, will be will be spread out. And again, so this way you guys can look at it at your leisure, and as long as nobody talks back and forth, um, it's all legal. Yes, yeah. so, understood. Just want to clarify myself Appreciate out of trouble. <laughs> so just to make sure Tim Hilchey here, um, you're meeting, you're going to meet, you're going to talk about what's, what the problems are, what the possible solution and action plan is, and then as appropriate, you'll come to the CONCOM with this plan and, and say, this is what we're going to do. What uh, we'd like to do. What we'd like to do. Right. Yeah. Yep. To, res to remediate. And that's a, that's when we're going to need to have our questions and, yeah, exactly. But again, you know, this way I figured if I can get it ahead of time, that way you can have questions. Um, and and to be honest with you, um, I, I don't think this is as, as, as insider information, but if you have a list of questions, if they could be forwarded to us, that way um, the in, instead, of it, if there's not an answer that the person would know right off the bat, they would have to get back to you that right takes that out of that mix. So that way you've got a, you've got a question, you should be able to get an answer right then and there. Um, I, again, I, I try and make things as clear cut as possible to make it move smoothly without having to repeat steps. Okay. Cool. Uh, if there's nothing else for me, for Kevin, I can let him go. Yeah, I agree. Thank you, Kevin. Yes, All thank right. you. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Good night, Kevin. Enjoy your weekend. You Thank too. you. All right, thanks. Okay, so um, now we'll jump back to the second thing under new business. Um, I'm just going to quickly share. Um, one of these resumes and uh, I think you all got these, but um, if that's not the case, then um, did everyone receive Emily Stockman and Kate Bednaz's um, resumes, CVs? Uh, Bill Mayor, PC, yes, we we have received those in prior. Okay. Yeah, people are pretty them? sure I have them. You're not sure, Pete? Uh, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure I have them in the file. Okay. Yeah. Um, the purpose of this line item was to basically um, try to identify well-qualified individuals who can uh, be <clears throat> used as consultants and have a couple of them in play so that um, if we get uh, a project that needs some urgent attention, we can uh, immediately say, well, um, Emily Stockman is uh, available to act on this, send her, you know, 
the peer review um, questions that, that we need to have resolved and, and have her provide, a, I guess, a, under the Massachusetts law, I think it's 53G, this, um, this process works where we put this out to the specific person that we just hire and then they come back and say, this is what it's gonna cost to do the work we want to have done. And then we present that to the applicant and the applicant says, yes, okay, we'll pay for this. Um, and then the work proceeds quickly as opposed to having to go through a process where we put out an ROI and all that stuff uh, um, or RFQ, I'm sorry. And uh, so, um, We've met Emily at one site visit, but um, I reached out to Deborah Henson, who's a Deerfield resident, but she's also PhD and head of um, wetland science department at UMass Amherst. And, um, you know, she had it, Emily Stockman was one of her grad students. Um, she had spoke very highly of Emily. So, um, I just wondered if, if you folks had looked through um, the CV that she sent us, if you had any further questions for her, or if you need to get further information from her before we would consider possibly using her as a consultant. Um, and yeah, hey, Tim, it's Bill Mayer, PC. Um, I just would like to say that I really do think that this is a brilliant step forward um, for Deerfield to have it, two uh, very well qualified qualified uh, wetland scientists or soil scientists. I I think that Emily's uh, um, CV is you know speaks for itself, and I uh, would not have reservation uh, for that that she would represent um, the best interests of a project that she'd be working on. All right, and um, just so that I can, uh, this was the other one that uh, Kate Bednaz is also, um, the reason why I, I um, wanted to have a couple of people is because occasionally someone will have worked with uh, yeah. an applicant and we'd need to have somebody who un has no connections and unbiased. Um, Kate's is a little more detailed, but both of them uh, have these, uh, major qualifications as wetland scientists and soil scientists. And, um, and we've, we've seen that the DEP, um, the DEP basically uh, validated the work that Ms. Bednaz did uh, at the Mill Village site. Uh, they pretty much agreed with what her findings were. Um, so uh, any thoughts on, on Kate Bednaz's uh, information? No, this P law. I, I think uh, both Emily Stockman and Kate Benes are, are are great candidates for this kind of support. Uh, just one point of clarification: there would be no retainage fee that the, the the town would have to commit to. It's all by project, and that would be any fee would be reverted to the applicant. Correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, I don't think that. Uh... The Conservation Commission has enough money in its budget to pay anybody to buy paper clips. So <laughs> I had a couple of pennies in my pocket, but I just want to make sure there's no make sure we all understand that. But no, uh, both both individuals uh, come highly recommended. They have great uh, resumes, and I, I would support both. And I think it's a great plan. Okay. And well, then, Tim Bill Mayor PC, I would second uh, Peter's uh, recommendation. Okay. So then if that's the case, then um, I would entertain a motion to approve both of these, both of these um, scientists as um, consultants we would, uh, we would refer to on a case by case uh, basis uh, and that they would be paid by applicants uh, under the uh, hiring consultant policy that we adopted a couple of months ago. That sounded like a motion, Tim. Are you making that motion? I make that motion. <laughs> I will second your motion. Uh, so motion's been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? 
Hearing none, uh, I call the question, Pete Law. Uh, aye, Pete Law, aye. Bill Mayor PC. Bill Mayor PC, aye. Tim Hilchi, aye. Okay. Um, now, I don't, there was one other thing that I wanted to mention that uh, I wasn't sure if you two had been received information. The MACC, the Massachusetts Association of Conservation Commissions is having its virtual um, conference beginning in April. And um, there were a couple of courses that I was looking at taking. One of them is a, like, there's a group of five fundamental courses. Bill and I went to one conference a couple of years ago and then COVID set in and so no one went last year. Um, but they offer trainings um, and I'm gonna ask, um, I'm going to ask Mark Stenson whether the WPA 101 that we took is an official training that would qualify, however, how important this is. If you take five fundamental courses and three advanced courses, you get a certificate that says, you know, you're a qualified commissioner under, you know, the, the fundamentals of the WPA. Uh, uh, and so the course that I'm looking at taking is writing, writing good conditions on projects. And I think, you know, we've all sort of been trying to come up with, um, let me see what it's called. Uh, come up with knowing how to do this properly. And um, so um, did, did I forward that to you guys or did you know about it on your own? Yeah, Ms. Bill Mayer of PC. I also, I received it directly from uh, the organization and I definitely- Good, yeah, cause We're all members. I wasn't sure Pete whether um, you would have gotten it because. Yes, I did. I received it and I was going to ask you about it tonight. So okay. it, was, it was perfect what, what we thought about uh, attendance and so forth. I haven't looked at it in a lot of detail. I just know it was coming up in April, um, but I just wanted to see what the opinions were on these um, attendance for these, um, these sessions. Okay, so um, I checked with Casey Warren and Brenda, um, Brenda Hill, who's the uh, town accountant, and we have about $400 in the budget that's left over. Um, and the town, um, we're being put in for another $700, I believe, in the, uh, the annual town warrant. Um, uh, because Casey Warren had to decide how much to, to budget for our department. Um, and Louie and she, and there was a little juggling and so she put in 700, which is actually a little lower than what was the previous year. So there's enough money in, in the account for these courses cost $55. We're all members. And um, so I just signed up for one, that course. And I, I wouldn't feel, unfortunately the, well, what you'll do is you'll go in and you'll, you'll log into MACC, I mean, web.org and then there, there's a tab that says education. Um, Pete, I don't know if you have a password yet, but if you don't. I, I think I jumped into it I, I, when it first came out, which was, uh, right. it was, this came out in early March. I think I jumped into it, took a look. So if okay. I don't, um, do we have a password from the town or do we have to do our own? Well, I think I have a, an individual password. I think, okay. Bill, do you have a password? Yeah, Bill Mayor PC. I think we all do establish our own passwords. Right. Okay. And if you need help, what you, you can reach, you can reach out to, um, I think it's Joey Bigglesworth or, uh, yeah. okay. and they can help you set a password um, and username. And then you can access the, uh, the list of courses that are available. Um, right. I'm also, I'm also going to go back through my paperwork because when we went to the conference in 2019, I think it was, um, we took courses and I need to check to see if, if I've already gotten credit for some of these fundamental courses or whether they were more, um, <clears throat> you know, at the time I didn't understand exactly how this process worked, but uh, I don't think it's important that necessarily that we become certificate people, but, um, you know, I do want to educate myself as much as possible so that um, we can 
So I think we should be looking at the fundamental courses and seeing which one of those are interesting and which one we think you know, we should apply for. And um, you can pay by credit card and then just print out the, the receipt, um, which I did. So I've, I've registered for one course and I also um, registered for a year. They only, they have a mass of the MACC environmental handbook for conservation commissioners, um, but it's only available online and you have to, you're not supposed to share it. So it's only $15. So in total, I put $70 on, $71 on my credit card that I'll seek reimbursement for. Um, so please look and see if there's anything that you're interested in. Yeah. The courses are being offered from six to 8.30 at night. And then on the weekends, they're being offered throughout the day, I think. So um, not everything is available that, but uh, at a time which might be convenient for you. But um, I would encourage you to look and see if there's something that you'd like to do. And if you were interested in this conditions course, um, we could backstop each other if, if we overlap on these things, so. Great, no, I'll definitely look into that as it was uh, something I was gonna ask you to about to see what, um, what your thoughts were. So that's great, good to hear. And we'll follow up with that. And I also- Yeah, hey to... Tim, it's uh, Bill Mayer of PC. I just, I, I think it's it's great uh, that, that we have this available to us and maybe just each commission member can, uh, or each commissioner can take a look to see if there are courses that each of us are interested in um, right. and uh, follow up offline on stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. And yeah, it's a good idea that we can spread it out and not overlap. Right. Um, excellent. So let's do that. Um, I wanted to say, um, Pete, I appreciate you have experience that I don't have. So I'm very thankful for your questions that you you bring up in these in, in these meetings. I, um, I, uh, I'm, I hope that we'll all you know just feed off each other and and uh, make make the commission more effective that way. So thanks. Yes. Yeah. Well, yes. I asked a lot of questions at times. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> now, all right. So. Um, I don't believe that there is any mail that um, Sue sent me. So is there any other business that anyone wants to discuss? This Pete Lai, I just wanted to bring up one and I should have uh, asked you to put it on the agenda. Um, okay. And if we don't, if we can't talk about it tonight, that's fine. But just wondering any updates on the Cumberland Farms um, status of, of uh, the follow-up there. Sure. Yeah, there there is something and I... Um, I actually should uh, forward this to Sue or, and um, the, uh, the, let's see, Kristen McDonough, I believe it is, um, is the uh, <clears throat> representative for, let's see, SWCA, which is the, the, the wetlands group that uh, was working with Cumberland Farms on, on this. And uh, the latest communication I have is um, that they want to set up um, a site visit in the spring. And the, the date June 4th has been suggested, um, which I think might be a Friday. Um, and I wondered if... Um, Yes, it's a Friday. I wondered, you both work, so I wanted to get um, some sense of your availability on weekdays versus, um, we can certainly try to get this done on a weekend uh, if that's more convenient for both of you. So, hey, Tim, it's Bill Mayer, PC. I could, I could attend a meeting uh, uh, at 4.30 or after on that day. Okay. Yeah, Friday afternoons are, are fairly open to me, but um, yeah, I can definitely do it 4.30 after the okay, so work uh, and build what, up. what I would do then is um, 
I'll respond to this uh, person and suggest that if we could do it at uh, after 4.30 on the 4th, and if not, is there an alternative? Would, if not, are, are weekends better or do you prefer not to be bothered on weekends? Which is fine with me. Uh, Bill Mayor, PC, I, I would prefer to meet on that Friday afternoon uh, okay. rather than Saturday or Sunday. Um, Good. All right. And um, I'll, so I'll, I'll send this along and see if we can cement it. And then I'll share it with you and Ben and, and um, see if we can't uh, get a fair amount of us there and get this thing taken care of. Um, they'll, have, they'll have people to talk about the work that's been done and, and what their view of. And I might invite Louie just because, you know, he's had a history with this that's, uh, you know, more in depth than what I, I have or any of us have. So um, just to get his historic perspective, he might remember some things that, that we weren't aware of. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, I'll do that uh, after we sign off here and then uh, let you guys know. Anything else? Uh, no, hey, Tim, it's Bill Mayor of PC. I think we're uh, all good. May I make a recommendation to adjourn. Yes. Well, actually, we have to we have to set our meeting. Too. Yeah, well, that's all true. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think. The uh, last Thursday of April, the, the third week I'm going to be gone, but I think I'll be around the last week of April, so that should be fine. So when you say the third week, do you mean March? Uh, like the 16th through like the 23rd or so of April. Okay. So um, if we made it the 29th, which is, it, there's actually five Thursdays in April, but if we made it the 29th, would that work for you, Bill? Uh, yes, uh, the uh, April 29th would work for me. Okay, works for me and works for you, Pete? Yeah, uh, I'll be back on, on that week for sure. Okay, so then um, I move that we set the next meeting for um, April 29th at 7 p.m. I, uh, I second that, thank you, Tim. Uh, all in favor, Tim Hilchey, aye. Bill Mayer, Pete Law, aye. Yeah, Pete Law, aye. All right, um, and so, now we can entertain the motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> All right, uh, I'll second that motion, Tim, uh, at 814. All right, all in favor, aye, Tim Hilchey. Aye, Pete Law. Aye, Bill Mayer, PC. All right, thanks, gentlemen. Thank thanks, you. Alex. Thanks, guys. All right, Thank take you. care now.